Marathon Stadium, the Knights and the Bulldogs. Dennis Scott stepped past Adam McDougall before Matthew Johns and Tony Butterfield combined, both playing their last regular season match and grabbing the Knights for lead. But being labelled underdogs didn't sit well with the Bulldogs. Hazamil Matthew scampering over in his 100th first grade match. The Doggies up by two at the break. But that's as good as it got for the Bulldogs. Newcastle running in three more tries in the second half. Wide ball, three on, one, brief David across to Mark Hughes, and Hughes scores what will probably be the winning try here. Johns and Butterfield saying their home crowd thank yous, but they'll be back to the finals. At Marathon Stadium, Tony Butterfield played a memorable farewell home game. The retiring Knights captain landed on report for a hit on Corey Hughes and also scored a try in a seesawing battle. At Newcastle, the Bulldogs tried to spoil the official going away party for two of the night's best, but Peden kept the hosts on track as he put Gidley away before a Matthew Johns grubber created a try from one guest of honour to another. And the captain! Did he get it down? And she's a try. Tony Butterfield, take the bow. Well, Masri helped make a game of it just before the break, but when Ben Kennedy scored after the restart, the momentum proved too much. The big crowd not phased by the knowledge of a home final as they remain to farewell their first and second nights. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. Tony Peters joins us looking very spiffing indeed, and the reason for the Tux is league's big awards night. Who's the likely Dally M winner? Well, Tim, when voting went behind closed doors after round 21, the St George Illawarra 58 Trent Barrett was showing the way. He led with 22 votes. He was two votes clear of Brett Kamali. Now, Andrew Johns, of course, is looking for three yep. Player of the Year awards in a row. He was next best on 17. The only other two chances, Timmy, were just behind Brad Fittler from the Roosters and, of course, the young, talented Parramatta forward Nathan Hindmarsh. Now, they were both on 16. So I guess, Tim, if you look at the fact that seven of the last eight award winners have come from the number six, number seven jersey. Nathan Hindmarsh winning it would be a very interesting surprise. Now, no spot for Lenny Beckett in the home match against Melbourne. No spot for, no spot for Lenny Beckett. No, he's a bit of a pygmy, Tim, as far as height goes, catching the, the crossfield bombs. Tamana Tahu and Darren Albert, tall timber, they're the fellows who are going to be needed in a tight situation for high kicks. Tell you what, everyone's having a say today, aren't they? Newcastle coach Warren Ryan has hit back over Anderson's claims that home sides tend to benefit from the referees. Gamesmanship again, Tim, as I alluded to before. He's just trying to get a better deal for his players. They're going to be coming up against a terrific or a tough situation at Marathon Stadium. 25,000 Novocastrians screaming for the Knights. Anything the referee does is going to be wrong. It's a tit-for-tat situation, Tim. The comments that would have been left unsaid at the home semi-final. Simple as that. Game, set, match. All right, Tony, thanks for all of that. Have a nice night at the Dallies. And Newcastle's Andrew Johns is chasing another record tonight. Johns is in line for his third consecutive Dally M Player of the Year award. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Dinner suits for our rugby league stars tonight for the Dally M's, the game's award for the best players. Patrick Mollihan is there and Pat, who's the favourite? Kylie, Andrew Johns is chasing three straight here at the Town Hall tonight. Well, judging by the number of votes that were cast, there's no doubt about that. There were many thousands of votes for the Proven Summons Award. They came in through Big League, through the Daily Telegraph, of course, and through the NRL's website. And here are the players who polled highest. Here are the nominees for the Proven Summons Medal. Andrew John's greatness isn't only measured by the esteem of his peers. He's earned the admiration of rugby league fans the world over. And it's that popularity that has Joey odds-on favourite to be the people's choice for a record third straight time. Andrew through, Andrew steps, and the gold is over. One constant in the changing world of rugby league is the popularity of Roosters, New South Wales and Australian captain Brad Fittler. Over the last decade, Freddie has evolved from teenage phenomenon to become the game's senior player. But his simple personal style has remained unaffected. I'd like to thank everyone that came tonight. And I hope you all stay around for the lab of honour. We told you we put on a show and we did. Trent Barrett has been on the verge of greatness for several seasons, and at the end of this season, he's poised to take the final step. Barrett will get a double this time. 
his second try. Now unshackled as the Dragons' playmaker, Barrett is well in contention for World Cup selection, and the public has given him their vote of confidence. The Panther faithful revere him as a deity, and his uncanny ability to sniff out an intercept is just one of the ways Ryan Girdler lives up to his supernatural billing. Gerd's followers have been piling up the votes the way their idol piled up points in the Origin Series and the Premiership. Does it again. In 2000, Brett Kamali completed his ascension to the elite level, arriving as a key part of the New South Wales and Australian teams and continuing to be the epicentre of the Melbourne Storm. The ball his status as one of the game's genuine stars is confirmed by massive public support. Once again, an incredibly strong field, but the people have chosen and Norm has the envelope. And the winner of the Proven Summons Award is Mr. Andrew Johns. Andrew, well done. Thanks, mate. Uh, you've got three of those now, three in a row, and uh, two Dell EM medals too, so uh, who knows what's to come, but you, you must have a, a very full trophy cabinet by now. Uh, they're actually in my underpants drawer, so they're pretty <laughs> safe there. No one will go near them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Andrew, anyone from the, the Newcastle team uh, who's as popular as you is going to always uh, stand a good chance of winning a, a vote like this because the Newcastle community is one that's definitely prepared to go the extra yard to show their support for the team. Yeah, that's right. We're very lucky. Every second weekend, uh, you know, we play in front of capacity crowds and they travel also. But, uh, you know, it's lovely to receive a award like this. Um, you know, the fans own the game and I think it's great to see them all turn out tonight and uh, get behind it. An important factor for Newcastle, of course, this weekend is that you do have the, the home game at Marathon and you, you did that by finishing in the top four. But the form line with Melbourne is all over the place. You had a big win over them early in the season when, to be fair, they were, they were down. And then next time that you played them, they, they belted you. Yeah, it's going to be a big game and uh, you know, they've got a few ex-Newcastle boys in there, so they always lift for it. And, uh, you know, we play a similar style, nice awesome, you know, in your face, flat attack. So, uh, you know, I'd say there'll be a big crowd there and it'll be a great game. All right. Well, congratulations on the fifth medal that uh, I've been here to stand here for. And, and who knows, as I said, what is to come. Congratulations, Andrew Johns and Norm Proven and Arthur Summons. The Sydney Town Hall hosted Rugby League's annual Dally M Awards last night. The game's famous faces gathered, flanked by their adoring fans. The Knights' Andrew Johns added the People's Choice Proven Summons medal to his trophy cabinet. Uh, they're actually in my underpants drawer, so they're pretty <laughs> safe there. No one will go near them. But the main Dally M eluded Johns. 28 points is Mr Trent Barrett. The St George Illawarra 5-8 given the honour over Melbourne's test halfback Brett Kamali. My speech was pretty ordinary, I couldn't talk, but um, I'm just, just wrapped, you know. It's, words can't explain it. And lastly, thousands roll up to see King of the Castle Tony Butterfield receive membership to that most revered of rugby league clubs. Congratulations, there's your award and yesterday's hero. How's it feel, mate? Oh, feels good, mate. I'm glad that game's over. I think we can get on with the semis. Take a look at me. I'm yesterday's hero. Yesterday's hero. That's all I'll be. Yesterday's hero. Yesterday's hero. Hi, it's Paul Langmack here, yesterday's hero. And I'm here I am at Marathon Stadium with the Yesterday's Hero Award. I'm here for Tony Butterfield's last home game. And if you remember, last Thursday night he brushed me in the car park. I'm here to catch up with him. They give him his award. Let's see what his mates have to say about him. So, mate, you had a big send-off when you retired. Ground record. You know, lap of honour. Yeah. What, what, what would be going through Butts' mind right now? Oh, well, uh, hopefully it won't be his last home game here. If they win today, uh, next week he'll get a start. But um, probably not much with Butts going through, is it? Jason, how's Molly Meldrum going these days? You know, you released the number one chart hit in the 80s. 
How's Molly going? I don't talk to Molly much anymore, Langers. Your music career's all washed up? No, it's just kicking off, mate. So you got an album coming out? I've got a single coming out, so... Want to uh, give us a few lines? No, thanks, mate. Yeah, come on, mate. No, not at the moment. What do you think would be going through his mind right now? You retired. What do you think would be going through Butts' mind? There better be some uh, liquid left in them kegs. You know, you had a big farewell when you retired. Here <laughs> the Knights, you know, had a big crowd here for you, just like today. What'd be going through Butts' mind right now? Well, yeah, that's the fantasy version, Lang, is I actually, uh, I tore a cruise ship on a freezing cold Friday night at Canberra, and that was it. Uh, so nothing really happened, but... Um, no ticket tape parade? <laughs> no, just a boot up the date and out the back door, I suppose. So when you retired, you had a big send-off similar to this. Mate brings back memories. No, uh, I don't even knew I left. Mate, what have you done to yourself? You look like you look like a cross between Steen, Jerd and Paul Vaughan. So what do you think of Tony Butterfield, mate, his contribution to the club? He's been there from day one. He, he's still here and he's still playing the best footy ever. I hope he has a big one. Congratulations, there's your award and yesterday's hero. How's it feel, mate? Oh, it feels good, mate. I'm glad that game's over and we can get on with the semis. What about scoring a try, mate? Oh, you know, I knock those over every couple of weeks, but if we get one in the semis, we'll be happy. No worries, mate. Thanks, Phil. Matty, how's yeah. it feel, mate? I'm just about to do it for a club. <laughs> in Australia, no, yeah. anyway. In Australia, yeah? Yeah. So how's it feel, mate? Oh, mate, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, you mixed emotions, all of this. Langers, you know, uh, sort of, you know... Going to another great club in England, but it's hard to beat their supporters here, mate. They're tremendous, you know. And who's your favourite player? Lou Savinovic. <laughs> to all of you people, you are what this is all about. To play for you guys on a week-to-week -week basis is what I look forward to every year. To do you proud and to say that I've represented you people with pride and passion is what I look forward to. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, there we have it. Big crowd, big atmosphere. But he's in the Yesterday's Hero Club. And once again, the hero comes good. Back to you. Thanks so much. Yesterday's Hero, the Paul Langmack, and some emotional scenes there at Marathon Stadium. Well done, boys, finishing off in front of a crowd of 25, 26,000. Well done. Of course, they're back there this week and taking on the Melbourne Storm. NRL finals action as the Knights rise high over the Premiers. Newcastle has overcome its first finals hurdle in convincing style, beating Melbourne in difficult conditions at Marathon Stadium. The Knights won 30-16, to outscoring the Premiers five tries to two. There was nothing cheerful about the conditions and watching nine at home seemed the place to be. Newcastle make their way out. The game hadn't even warmed up when jarring defence left Kearney cold. McDougall also came in for special attention. An early penalty gave Melbourne the lead, but only until Kamali handed back a simple equaliser. The first 40 finished with a try apiece. An overlap worked for Newcastle. Then just before the break, Geyer's foresight put Melbourne back in front. In the second half, Andrew Johns didn't need his silver boots to stand out. Gidley, the disco king. Then brother Matt helped the Knights regain the upper hand. For Newcastle. Butterfield was also inspirational, charging into the defence and giving his team that crucial momentum. Butterfield will just take him with him like a piece of baggage. From that, there was no coming back for the defending premiers. Newcastle just had to keep the ball alive and the openings appeared. This is Razzle. 30-16 to the Knights, with Melbourne's finals hopes now out of their hands. He's searching for a four-pointer, he gets it this time. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. And the Knights roll the reigning premiers in Newcastle. Newcastle has made a great start to its finals campaign, defeating reigning Premier's Melbourne at Marathon Stadium. The Knights ran out comfortable winners, while the Storm now need results to go their way in the other matches this weekend to stay in Premiership contention.
It was no storm, but heavy rain wasn't helping either side in the handling department early. Stephen Kearney wasn't looking too good, and that's no surprise given this eye shot from Knights skipper Tony Butterfield. After both sides potted two pointers, the Knights took a quick tap from a penalty. The perfect result. A grip to Morley Pass saw the Knights defence completely fooled. The gap opening for Matt Geyer and it led to a Tony Martin try. The Storm jumping to 10 8 in the last minute before half time. They chase through, no doubts about Tony Martin. Seven minutes after the break, brilliant from Matthew Johns for Matthew Dibley. Next, it was Andrew Johns to the air. Marcus by a nightmare as Adam McDougall plucked it out of Byer's hands. That saw Newcastle out to 20 to 10. She weight of possession killed Melbourne. The Knights produced some razzle dazzle rugby league. This play going through 10 sets of hands before Danny Badiris crossed. Newcastle cruising home. Melbourne now needs the Roosters to beat the Eels tonight and the Broncos to roll the Sharks tomorrow or their season's over. Bernard Cohen, Seven News. And Parramatta's surprise win means Premier's Melbourne are finished for the season. The first words of the Storm's obituary were written this afternoon when they were well beaten by Newcastle. Heavy rain threatened to dampen the attacking flair that a Newcastle-Melbourne final promised. A stripping penalty gave the Storm the early upper hand. Get the Storm on the board. What's off the boot looks strong and successful. Melbourne captain Stephen Kearney in trouble and for Brett Kamali an unhappy start in the much awaited battle of the halfbacks. It was a different story for his opposite Andrew Johns giving an ominous sign. From the next play, the Knights put on the first try of the match to lead 8-2. Embarrassment for the touch judge reporting Ben Kennedy for a supposed high tackle. And moments later, the Storm reducing the margin to just four points. Well, that's embarrassing. Andrew Johns, with his first mistake before half-time, failed to find touch from a penalty. And Brett Kamali took his chance with a nice pass to put Melbourne in front at half-time. After the break, that other John's boy, Matthew, displaying incredible skill off the boots, stole back the lead for Newcastle. The Knights then turned up the heat on the storm and Andrew Johns decided to make the match his own, targeting the vulnerable Marcus Bai. Andrew Johns will kick for Marcus Bai again, will tie our luck on that corner. This time McDougall's down with it. Melbourne coach Chris Anderson could do little as he watched the Knights' Tamanu Tahu run in his 19th try of the season, beating Darren Albert's record. He's searching for a four-pointer. He gets it this time. Brett Kamali had the final say, but it's the Knights charging forward in the final series. Tony Butterfield and Matthew Johns saying their goodbyes to Marathon Stadium. 30 to 16, five tries to two. Andrew Johns glad he was there for Big Brother Matthews' last game at Newcastle. I thought we had a good all-round game and I don't know, it's just um, just end up meeting each other and get the photo done, so it hasn't really sunk in, I think, later on tonight. I'll probably sink in. Especially the past two weeks, I think my mind's been a little bit ahead of me, so I'm thinking about the semi-finals, so I've been thinking all week how I want to play and, uh, you know, the next month I've got to be more dominant. The aim was to play a bit of territory the second half and we just didn't do that, you know, we, every time we got the ball, a couple of opportunities we had, we, we dropped it and uh, you know, they just had... 75% of the ball the second half, and it was just too much to overcome. Well, it's no surprise when you look at Newcastle to say Andrew Johns is the man that will, really will turn their fortunes one way or another. They've got a lot of great players. I mean, you've got Kennedy, Matthew Johns, there's plenty of them, but there's something really unique about Andrew Johns. He's got it all. The little chip, chip over the top, the long kick, the step off either foot, great passing both ways. I mean, he throws those bullets, uh, those cutout passes he throws get there in an instant. John's ladies and gentlemen, there this is uh, Hooker Badiris who picks up the four points. Newcastle seem to be, if there's a team to challenge Brisbane at the moment, mm. it seems to be Newcastle. No doubt, because one thing about Newcastle, they've got the, the kicking tactics to keep a side pinned in their entire brilliant, uh, territory it? throughout the, the second half. Now that was a great kick off the right, off the side of the, the boot. Look at the way in which it's the Matthew kick John's just skewed brilliant, isn't it? straight off for um, for the centre, Matthew Gidley to, to score the ball, uh, sees that ball. And of course there's a later one too where his brother kicks it over to the other side of the field. 
and uh, and for the big fullback um, McDougal. McDougal to score. Yeah. But that's their kicking game that gets them tries. They've also got a kicking game that pins the opposition in its territory for most of the match. Did and uh, there's McDougal scoring that try. And, and I think that, you know, the most bottom line with this story is that uh, the defending premiers, Melbourne, just had no ball at all in the second half. We know they could win a grand final away from Marathon, but Marathon's worth a lot to them. Is that the only time they get Marathon in this? Uh, yes, it is. We now move to the Sydney yeah. Football Stadium for uh, a series of matches. I think Harker's for, joined you, actually. <laughs> go away. Go. <laughs> so they've lost Marathon after the yeah. only one match. Yeah, but there's a sort of a rhythm developing about Newcastle. They'll probably get a weekend off. Or they, well, they certainly will get a weekend off. And um, they'll, they'll come into the semi-finals in a very intimidating sort of wind back the clock to that glorious win that they had in 97 move. <laughs> Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the very first Footy Show Awards. Tonight we honour some of our finest league players for their achievements not only on the field but off. Yeah that's right Dee and as we speak people are coming in by the thousands, anticipation is building, let's go and meet some of the guests. Mm -hmm. You look great tonight and uh, looking forward to a, uh, a super night. Thanks, mate. I've got the same hair. hair oh, no, I was just going to say, I feel like I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is a lot prettier than mine. Gary Freeman, I've heard that your name's up for coaching the Tigers. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Well, that, have I broken some really scary news? No, 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 no. no. You haven't. Uh, I'd still be mentioned in the papers. Um, I'm just waiting really for the board to have a, a meeting uh, on Thursday. Uh, then if applications are warranted from 1G Freeman, he may put his name forward. Excellent. Langus, how are you, mate? Hello, how are you? Mate, the suit. It's a dress-up night. Exactly, mate. It goes down big and uh, it'd go down big in Penrith area, wouldn't it? Mate, we, we get around in them. Yeah, I'm leaving the Cowboys and going to the Broncos next year. Are you excited about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, new change, new challenge. Can't wait. Got any tips for us? Who's going to win tonight? Uh, Brad Fittler. Brad Fittler, I reckon, too. Mate, I've got to ask. Looking sensational. Who are you dressed by tonight? Uh, I'd have to say my mother and my girlfriend, Shree. I oh, really have done a great job. Good evening, Mario. How are you? I'm thrilled, very excited about the Falcon Award going off tonight. Oh, can you believe it? An award named after your good Look self. It's like, ah, oh, Sterlo! Who <laughs> dressed you tonight? Oh, mate, uh, I think Ned. Ned, Ned looks straight from the kennel. He hasn't let me down. Very sharp, mate. Can you give us a spin? Mate, a little spin. Like a... <laughs> nice, mate. Very nice. OK, Sharon, welcome to the Footy Show Awards. Uh, lovely ensemble tonight. Uh, who's that boy? Oh, goodness. Uh, put it together myself, really. It's all over the place. Wonderful job. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Looking forward to this evening? I am, actually. I'm normally in bed at this time, so I'm actually foregoing sleep to be here. So I hope it's very exciting. How was that win on the Saturday? Was that exciting? Yeah, very exciting. Very good. Very good. Yeah, first half, probably a little bit sloppy, and uh, we were behind at half-time, but the second half was great. Big crowd, and it was raining, so it was a good one for us. Excellent. And do you think there's going to be a repeat performance of yours in 1997? Well, it's been the talk of the town, hasn't it, in the last everyone's been asking that. I think so. I think we've got a better side this year. Probably a tad more skill, but at the end of the day, it's the reason why the, you do the things you do, and hopefully, the momentum will build a little bit, and the boys can, can get a victory. It'd be great. Mate, if this isn't, if this isn't Joe Pesci out of the uh, Goodfellas, mate, I don't know what it is. The mafia look, the little shirt, the tie, the cut above the lip, looking very sharp, Matty. Yeah, well, uh, good friend, I'd say hello to uh, Julio over there in Italy. He designed this terry toweling outfit, and uh, there you go, mate. Mate, he's done a wonderful job, and I saw uh, Joey looking very similar. Yeah, yeah, Joey's a uh, cheap version of me tonight. That, uh, that's most of the time, that's normally the case anyway. A great win on the weekend. Yeah, very fortunate to get out there at half time. I was thinking, um, since we're playing next week and we we're very ordinary, but uh, you know, it was a great comeback and uh, a really good crowd, so I think home ground advantage does play a big part in it. Welcome to the Foot Show Awards, ladies. Uh, you both look stunning tonight. Uh, your dress is a boy. This is a Carlos and Patty. And yours is a hussy. Yes. <laughs> a hussy. A hussy. Is, it, is that a European? No, not her. A European look or? Um, I, this is just a Australian designer look. Hello, Brett. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very well. I've really enjoyed watching the Storm play. A fabulous side, but bad luck, huh? Yeah, you know, it was certainly disappointing to be knocked out, but uh, you know, we've had a pretty good year. We've made the semis, but uh, you know, just uh, disappointing, I suppose. Sad. Mate, yeah, the wife dress. We look better than the Newcastle blokes. They look like they're going to a funeral. So, uh, MG going for the silk shirt, mate. Obviously spending a lot of time in the weight room. Yeah, dressed by Len Stacker tonight. Uh, the Len Stacker range, so it's uh, hope I come out well. So there you go. There's been a wonderful array of fashion here tonight. And D, I can tell you, everyone is looking their best.
especially you. Look at you, Mr. Girdler. Very sharp. Very sharp. I think it's going to be a great night to match what we've seen as a, a sensational season of rugby league. Take it away. Let's go. If you think you've seen the most exciting, even, unpredictable competition this year, you ain't seen nothing yet. King Keaton for regather. Yes! He's done it! He's who does it! Fewer away for Berner. Berner inside ball for Timmon. Timmon's kick. Oh, he'll score! Oh, this is rapid fire! This was the first year for the West Tigers in the competition. We gave our fans plenty to cheer about. Next year will go even better. Here's Craig Field looking for the regather. He does that. A bet down. Carlo. Carlo gets it away. And Joel Kane hangs in. It's been one of the toughest competitions I've played in for a lot of years. Hasn't been an easy game. And you know, warming up to the semis, I think, you know, it's a one-horse race. Go to the Broncos. Well, hang on. I'm in Newcastle. Now, Andrew. Oh, look at Andrew. John, ladies and gentlemen. John's one of the greatest players of all time. The boys have put on a big show this year, but it's not over yet. Bring it on. Cross on for Pulatella. Pulatella, he's over again. Tony Pulatella. Two in from touch. It's coming around. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. He's got it. He's got it. Season 2000, what a year it's been. Provides some big upsets. Been very unpredictable. You can say one of the most even competitions ever seen. Lechak gets away, puts it on the chest of Fittler. You can't beat that left foot step. Fittler! 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 He'll do it! He's there! For me, I really want to leave the club on a high and hopefully that would mean back-to-back -back premierships. LeVere goes to full speed very quickly and Kamali finishes it off. Oh, beautiful. It's been a uh, extremely tough competition. Now we're narrowing down into the semi-finals. It's going to be a tough semi-final series and uh, may the best team win. Running into Adam McDougall. McDougall takes the ball off him. There's a foot race done. It's Craig Wing. Craig Wing moves the pass. Sailor's after him. Howard's in front by two. Sailor can't get him. Sailor won't get him. Howard scores. Obviously this year has been an emotional year for me because it is my last. But all around it's been a great year for rugby league and it's one I'll never forget. night of the footy show awards a first year and we hope it's something that we'll be bringing to you for many years to come plenty of stars out tonight and joining me a man who needs no introduction but we'll give him one anyway would you please mate welcome the king of newcastle paul the chief harrigan now chief on the weekend the newcastle boys showed once again they're not missing you one little bit well, certainly not. No, it was a good win and uh, they're pretty excited. No injuries for the Knights, which I think is pretty important, but uh, I can tell you the week off, they're very excited, particularly the coach, Byron. Now, we've got you up to give an award, which we're actually not giving anything for, but we feel it's, uh, it's a part of the game that should be highlighted. Trying to have a conversation with you, it shows that you have caught plenty of hits over Thanks the year. Them, That's Thanks, all right, I'll look <laughs> after you. So we're going to have a look at a package of the hits of the year and then we're going to come up with what we deem to be the best. Lovely. Here they are. Hit of the year. Gordon Tallis, Brisbane Broncos. Rodney, oh, 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 oh. Robbie Ross. 
Ross, Melbourne Storm. Oh, Robbie Ross has got him a beauty. They've turned it over Adrian Lamb, and he's in trouble. Stephen Kearney, New Zealand. Rodney Howe. Daniel Wagon, Parramatta Eels. Wagon comes out of the line and nails it. Tony Carroll, Brisbane Broncos. Yes, some absolute bell ringers there, and Paul, which did we think was the best? Some fantastic runs there, but it goes to Boo Boo, Robbie Ross. Robbie Ross. Storm. You might remember this game early in the year. The Roosters started particularly well. This was a tackle that changed the course of the game. In fact, Melbourne scored not long after. Robbie Ross, absolute beauty. And we actually caught up with Adrian Lamb long afterwards to get his reaction on that hit. Congratulations, Robbie, on winning the hit of the year. It was a beauty. Anyway, the boys have asked me to pass the award on to you, so here it is. <laughs> Robbie, now we're even. And a good get square there from Adrian Lamb. Now, what we believe tonight is one of the more important awards is the footy show Punter's Pick. Uh, we've, over the internet, our website, about a week ago, we had for seven days fans ringing in to find out who they thought was the, the best player in the competition, their favourite player, and these are the nominations. In fact, you know who the winner is. I sure do. Are we going to look at the nominations or are we going to get straight into it? No, you can tell us. All right. One of the best players to play the game, good friend of mine, Andrew Johns. Andrew. Congratulations, Andrew. Um, a bumper season for you, but I said that this was one of the more important awards because I think for players, it is important to know that they're getting through the fans and, and they're getting plenty of enjoyment out of what you're doing on the field. It is nice, for uh, especially the people. You know, they own the game, and uh, especially I'm lucky in Newcastle where every second week, you know, they turn up in droves to watch us, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice trophy too, so uh, <laughs> I look good at home. You also get the, the sound system from... Uh, from Harvey Norman as well, so that's something great to take home. And oh, beautiful. The, the I'm fans bit, of, bit, I'm a bit of an 80s man. So you are indeed, yeah. yeah. Your brother's a 60s man, but uh, you've progressed. The fans from Marathon, how important are they to you? Oh, they are. They lift us on the weekend, uh, without doubt. The home semi for us was very important. And, uh, you know, without doubt, uh, you know, when we're really struggling in defence, they really lift us. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can you know, send them a little bit happier in a couple of weeks if, uh, if we win the Premiership. Ladies and gentlemen, two of Newcastle's very best, Paul Harrigan and Andrew Johns. Well, ESP, mental telepathy. That's what we're going to do tonight. We need the help of uh, MG. Are you here somewhere? My guy. Yep. Choppy chop, up here, buddy. I took the mickey last time with you, you did so well, I thought I'd use you again. <laughs> hey. 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 All right. Gee, you're a tall devil, aren't you? You're not bad, 6'4". Six, 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 what do you do for a hobby? Go to the airport, duck planes? <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, Mark, I'm going to uh, reward you, actually, if you play along with me tonight. Uh, see all this money? Yep. I'm going to let you cut off as many notes as you wish. Uh, if you play along. Yep. Alrighty? Sounds good. So, and if this works. Okay. So here's a pack of cards. Yep. Now they're invisible. Yep. It's a, not a trick you see every day. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a natural. <laughs> It'd actually help if you took me out of the box first, though. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him out of the box. There you go. Yeah. You give the box to somebody that you, that you know or don't know. There you there go, buddy. Go. All right. Good box, very, Hey? Good box. Yeah, it's a very striking face there. Been struck there a few times, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, now spread the deck into a fan. Now go up to anybody you like, anybody you like at all, in the room, go up to them and say, here stupid, pick a card, any card. I bet you must say stupid. Joey, forgive me for this, here stupid, pick a uh, card. Thank you. Good choice. Okay, remember the card, sir? Uh, yep. <laughs> so he looks at it, fair enough. So, um, 
Remember the card. Now, you've got 52 cards to choose from. No joker whatsoever. And we're about to try a little bit of mental telepathy. You understand? Yep. 52 cards, no joker. By the way, your full name is? Andrew. Your full name? <laughs> Middle name? Paul Bearer. Oh, you're the ventriloquist yeah, and he's a dummy? Is this the way it works? <laughs> he can speak for himself. Come on, what's your middle name? Gary. That's correct. <laughs> Very good. One out of one, run or roll. So, a um, bit of ESP there, see? So, you ready, Mr. Johns? Yep. yep. Okay, one card, turn it upside down. Put it back in the deck that uh, my guy's holding upside down. Okay, reshuffle, man. <laughs> You're good at that. <laughs> Try not to overact that, alright? Okay. Okay, so um, put it back in the box. No, he's got the box. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Fair enough. Now, um, this is an invisible pack of cards. I'm about to make them materialise. And there you are. Now, please don't react to that. It was basically nothing. But there is one card in their face up there. Now, would it not be amazing if it happened to be exactly the same card that Mr. John's here? Uh, mentally thought of. Hmm? Wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah? If it was correct, would you be impressed? Probably freak out, wouldn't you? <laughs> if I can do this, you shouldn't be sitting there, you should be kneeling. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Mr. Johns, you'd be impressed, huh? Eh? You'd probably freak out. Freak out. Admittedly, it'd be pretty hard to tell with you, but, but you would. <laughs> so, uh, for the first time, we've got a lot of witnesses here. So, you can't deny I've got the right one. And there is only one card in their face up. So in front of all these witnesses, so you can't deny it, the card face up in that deck is? Tell everybody. You said the six of hearts. Is there any reason why you chose the six of hearts? Because that's wrong. <laughs> really the six of hearts? You're not making this up, are you? You actually turned it face up in here? Okay, I guess we can check, can't we, Mike? Yep. All right, now you're right here so the people right up the back there can actually... Uh, well, they can't see, but you're here to vouch for it. Yep. I'm not doing any sleight of hand here. No. All right, six of hearts, you said. Notice they are indeed all face down, except for one card. <laughs> and that happens to be the six of hearts. And not only that, Mr. Johns, it's the only one there that I was that sure you'd say I put in the pack with a different colour. Oh. Hey? That's a E S P. Yes, indeed. Now, ESP, entertaining simple people. So, um, <laughs> I promise you that uh, if it worked, we'd uh, let Extra you cut off. We'd, <laughs> yeah, we could say that, but we won't. So there it is. Now, I'll tell you what we need to do. You get the scissors and you cut across where I've stuck them together, right? Yep. I'll even let you start at the 50, if you like, and you've got to cut across. Yep. If you cut diagonally, yep. it won't, won't work, all right? Okay. Understand? Yep. Okay, you've got yep. 10 seconds, though. That's all you've got. What, to cut as many as I can? Cut as many as neatly as you can. Go. Oh, One, fuck. two, three. <laughs> Four. What's the problem? Hang on, what's the problem? I can open them, there you go. Right. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You lose, I'm sorry. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> yeah, Phil Cass there with a couple of easy targets. Well done, thanks MG and uh, Andrew Johnson. You're watching the Footy Show Awards. After the rate, we'll come back with the 5'8", Halfback and Prop of the Year Awards. Welcome back to the Footy Awards night. It's been a great night so far. I can only get better on with one of the blokes who they, some say, the greatest player in the game. You've had a good year, John? Yeah, thanks, mate. Well, how, do you, how good do you think you can get when you get rid of this anchor M, John's on your back? Oh, that's not very nice, but uh, I don't know. Pretty good, hopefully. <laughs> you had a few injuries at the start of the year. They're all gone? Yeah, they're all gone, mate. The groin's good now. I know. The groin's 100%. She stopped ringing me. Yeah, she, uh, she said that. She said that uh, you stopped serving us, sir. So, uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Good on you, Joe. Back to you, fat. Thanks, Robbo. Thanks. Little Al Robbo. The best, the best country jockey in the world he is. Our next two awards are the 5 8 and Halfback of the Year awards. And to present them, please make welcome Matthew Johns and Ricky Stewart. <laughs> Matty, you 
first, Matty. Uh, good to have a week off, eh? Mate, real good. You know, uh, I mean, people say sometimes you lose your momentum by having a week off, but you never know. We might have played this week, had two blokes at the yeah. judiciary and two injuries, so it's good to have a week. Good, a great performance, one of your best of the year last uh, weekend against Melbourne. Yeah, people sort of said that we, we weren't that good the week before, but um, in the big games, you tend to have a better preparation, mm. and that's the way it was. So, mate, we can keep that going. We're in with a chance, but like you said, at the start of the year, you know, they're all good teams, mate. All right, mate, let's, let's have a look now at the 5'8 contenders uh, for the 5'8 of the year. Five-eighth of the year. Trent Barrett to George of the Wild Dragons. Adam Dykes, Sharks. Brad Fittler, Sydney Roosters. Here they are, all great contenders. And if we can get the ball up from TC. Matty, who's the 5'8 of the year? Uh, Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Uh, uh, two Fs, Freddie Fittler. <laughs> Hello, Bradley. Thanks for Would me. you say uh, this has been your best year form-wise ever? Um, it's mostly been a lot more consistent and I think I've had a lot more help from blokes like Fletch. Lemmy's been alright, Rico's had a big year so they take a lot of the load off you. But you seem to be taking them on a lot more than in past years. Yeah, I've had to, I sort of... Well in the past I've been inconsistent, I've uh, been a bit disappointed some games. And well, this year I sort of, with Fletch, especially he just likes getting out and playing footy so, you know, it adds to, your, you know, adds yeah. to the enjoyment and... The spirit and stuff. Now you blokes were tragic the other night. Oh, it's embarrassing. You can't play like that again, can you? It's embarrassing to collect this after last week, but uh, I think it's a case of inconsistency and a lot of sides have been um, a problem to that. The week before we played the Broncos and we're outstanding, and then this week we just we were flat. So, you know, hopefully it works in that sort of pattern and this week we'll be up for Canberra. Take on Canberra, that's right, on Sunday. Brad Fitley, our 5-8 of the year. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Stick. Hey, buddy. Another bloke, of course, one of our great campaigners who retired this year. Uh, Ricky, it's down to six. Who do you like? I think the Broncos still deserve to be favourites, but uh, I just think the, the Knights will be very tough. They've got a pack that can match them in size, and I think they've probably got a better back line. All right, let's have a look now at our halfback contenders. Halfback of the year. Craig Field, West Tigers. Andrew Johns, Newcastle Knights. Brett Kamali, Melbourne Storm. Some great players there, aren't they? Excellent uh, rugby league players. And uh, who is our halfback of the year? Brett Kamali. Well done, Brett. <laughs> Bit of rivalry up here. Now, you're also one of, them, one of those uh, great LG packages, of course, the telly, the video, all sorts of stuff. Uh, worth a lot of money. Well done on that, along with uh, Freddie. Uh, Melbourne, I thought, pretty ordinary the other day. Probably your worst performance of the year. Yeah, well, it was pretty ordinary. You know, obviously, uh, you know, Newcastle played quite well, and they, uh, you know, they deserved to win the game. But what they did, but uh, you know, disappointing for us as a club to to finish the way we have. What about yourself? I mean, you now have to be uh, in the superstar class. A great season for you. It's been a good year. You know, it's been a great three years for me down there. You know, I've, I've learned a heck of a lot, and. Uh, you know, hopefully the future will hold just as, as many happy thoughts as what we've had already. Well, the good news is they're off to the Northern Eagles to win the Premiership next year. <laughs> Brett Kamali, halfback of the year. Thanks, Brett. Good on, mate. And also our thanks to Ricky Stewart and Matty Johns. <laughs> next award, which is prop of the year, please make welcome one of the best ever, Glenn Lazarus. Well, from the number sixes, sevens, we go on to the eights, the prop forwards, and Lazo, you're the only man to have 
won premierships with three different clubs, a fantastic effort. Prop forward so important at this stage of the year. Canberra going along very nicely in that department. You seem to be enjoying the time out there with them. We see you running the bottle out every now and then. <laughs> Bit of coaching. I don't know if that's running, I do. I, well, it's just a slow, slow trot. Model. But, uh, yeah, look, I'm really, really pleased with the way the boys are going at Canberra, particularly the front rows. Obviously, they're pretty close to my heart because that's what I played. So, um, and I think we've got you know, three or four of the best that's going around the moment. And let me tell you that um, you know, in semi final football, you need them firing, and our blokes are doing that. Well, let's actually have a look at three of the best going around. They are our contenders for Prop of the Year. Prop of the Year. Darren Britt, Bulldogs. Luke DeVico, Canberra Raiders. David Bailey, Newcastle Knights. They're going on very nicely in the, in the engine room. One man who's not uh, in the nominations, Shane Webke, who is out injured, of course. That probably hurt his chances, but our winner tonight is... Uh, tonight's winner is David Fairley. Come and join me. It appears as though joining Newcastle, the change has actually been better than a holiday. Yeah, I've, uh, I've really sort of found, uh, it feels a bit funny to say this, but uh, to f where I belong, you know, I wish I probably had three seasons there. And uh, I guess front row of the year, the last few weeks I've played second row, but um, you know, one of the best in the business, Tony Butterfield, I've uh, got a lot, of th lot to thank for, and also Warren Ryan, who uh, has given me a great opportunity. You actually have played a, a couple of different positions, but predominantly front row, more games there than anywhere else this year. The Newcastle style of play seems to suit you, the offloading, the second phase work. It does. Uh, as everyone knows, you know, we like to throw the ball around in Newcastle and, um, you know, we've got such a great back line and, and we know that if, if we do our job, obviously, um, blokes like Andrew and Matthew can, and Matthew Gidley can um, carve them out wide. Well, in the kind of form of Sean this year, you would not be able to place in the World Cup side at the end of the, end of the year. Good luck for that. Would you please congratulate David Fairley and thank Ben Lazarus. Back to the Footy Show Awards. Now, this award is my award tonight. I'm giving this one. It's to a bunch of people, sadly neglected, I feel, over the years. Uh, they're lovely people. They're kind and good-hearted. They've had to live with a terrible affliction and actually play in the NRL. It's the best redhead player in the NRL. Here are the contenders. Best redhead in the NRL. Brad Myers, Brisbane Broncos. Alan Tung, Canberra Raiders. Lance Thompson, St George Illawarra Dragons. Andrew Johns, Newcastle Knights. One of your best, Joey. Fantastic stuff. Well, look, I couldn't split the four of them. So it's a dead heat between the four. And here to accept, on behalf of all redheads who have ever played the game, please make him welcome, Young Fatty. Mate. What's doing, Rodney? How are you travelling? All right? Yeah, good feet. Pretty good. How's uh, life out in the bush treat you? Oh, I don't live there anymore. You don't live in the bush, that's right, because you play. we saw you play footy a couple of weeks, so you go good. Yeah, I try to. Who do you model, who do you model your game on? Uh, don't, on anyone. <laughs> Excellent. There's young Rodney there. Before you go, just give us one before you go. <laughs> young Fanny there on behalf of all the redheads. Thanks, Rodney. <laughs> and from one superstar to a bloke who used to play for the South Queensland Crushers in the back row, a rare distinction to have a, a, uh, an award named that you're completely responsible for, but that is the situation tonight. It's the Maltese Falcon responsible for the Golden Falcon. Here is Mario Fennick. <laughs> Now, 
Mario, you know that on a footy show, the feeling is if someone's down, you put the boot in, you just try and make sure that you're not the one down so much. Um, people actually think that we'd actually, we don't get on, but you love us and we love you, don't you? I love you like a hole in the head, mate. All right, that's, that's enough, mate. Um, I had a 15 of course, year last, career. Last, mate, you've said enough, mate. Last year, the winner of the Golden Falcon was Danny Badiris. Just to refresh your memories, fantastic effort. Setting quite a standard for tonight. Danny Badiris, the hooker from Newcastle. Just balanced it for about 15 metres. Tremendous view of it head on here. Excuse the pun. It's become a prestigious award, Snorky, hasn't it? It has indeed. And something that I never realised there were so many Falcons in the game, to be quite honest, Mario. Yeah, good on your voice. And this is the reason why we do have it. <laughs> Solid as a rock, eh? Good on your voice. Thanks for Just that. Just listen, you can hear the hollow thud. <laughs> a bloke plays 15 years as a professional. And they pull that out. That's the sound that a ball makes when it hits a vacuum. That's unbelievable. Well, I had some good too, Stop. Let's have a look at the contenders for the Golden Falcon this year, Mario. The Golden Falcon. Bradley Clyde, Bulldogs. Nice and high. And they press all. So Bradley Clyde on the dog in here. And this could be a tie. Jack Elscott, Sydney Roosters. Oh, he's hit him on the head! The Darren Lockyer, Brisbane Broncos. Oh, here it is! Oh, oh the dead man of Sturlow, they love that! It's, a, a, it's a good one, too. It's a beauty! Lance Thompson, St George Illawarra Dragons. Oh, no. What did you call them, a rabble? It's a good award, isn't it? We they're, love it. They're throwing their heads at the ball. They're diving metres, Mario, to become someone like oh. yourself. But no one did it better than the Canterbury duo of Brad Clyde and Daryl Halligan. Please, mate, welcome The Rock. Now I'll come across, um, I guess we've got to ask you that it looked as though it was something that you'd actually practice at training, was that the case? I guess you'd like to say so, but uh, I think Brad's told himself so many times now that he did it on purpose, he actually believes he did. Now fair to say that you know, you've created history this year by breaking all point scoring records, but over all of the years you've played, this is the highlight. <laughs> oh for sure, I mean, uh, I don't, don't think Mario realises what he's done in rugby league to uh, have an award like this. <laughs> Something come off his melon sauce. Thanks. Fantastic. Have a look at her. Thanks, Rock. Yeah, solid. This man is the Rock, one of the all-time greats. You've only got to look at the, the point scoring records to understand that. Would you please thank Daryl Halligan and Mario Thanks for joining us tonight. We've had a great night. This has been the first. We hope that this becomes one of the, the great nights in rugby league. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next Thursday at 9.30. Bye for now. The Newcastle Knights have a week off and have planned to clear their minds with a two-day escape to the North Coast later this week. The Knights have also been using a sports psychologist to help settle any nerves. But today it was entertainment plans for their bonding trip. Getting a guitarist along so we can have a bit of a sing-song. So. What do you think of that? Good, good idea? Yeah, it'd be a good night. Around the barbecue. Motivated. I'll get us motivated. Having a good time. Newcastle play the winner of the Canberra and Sydney Roosters match, of course. Right back for Chris Garawana. Long pass, perfect to Taylor. Then short to Bill. A beautiful ball for Fairley. Taylor giving it to Fairley. Fairley's over. Slendon. He's done it before. He reaches out like a centipede or something like that. Maybe an octopus. Down it goes. And David Fairley has scored his second try. He's been a great player for a long time. First came in a grey with North City 1989, had uh, plenty of years there and finishing off this year with, of course, a magnificent year at Newcastle and a chance to maybe get into the grand final and go out as a winner. He's off at the end of this season to St Helens as well and he joins us. David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Freddie. First of all, you must have played plenty of footy with uh, the Falcon. Must be something you can tell us. <laughs> something <laughs> behind the scenes. We've only got another 20 minutes, yeah. so it'll be a bit longer than that. 
I was going to no, say, he's good, j- mate. J- just to wrap on, on Daisy, Dave, is he, in your career, you meet blokes, he brings his football boots every time he plays. He's a bloke, you knew what he, you were going to get out of him, 100%. Mm. And uh, having blokes a- around like him were fantastic. Good bloke too, Daisy. I've got to say, I won't talk out of school, but when they had head measuring competitions, Daisy <laughs> would win hands down. Yeah, but I'm a good sort, mate. You are a fairly big melon you've yeah. got there. Yeah. Now, the nickname Daisy, I mean, great nicknames like Fatty and Gus and Sturlo. How did you get Daisy? Mate, it's actually uh, D-A-Z. When I first come into grade, um, <laughs> they come from the country, you know, I was always in a bit of a daze and, mm. and you know, things like that. And, so, you know, he's always in a daze and it went from daze to daisy and, you know, obviously... Fair enough. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's, your, that's what you're talking about. That's my version. That's my version. That's, 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 that's a porky. Never I've seen one. Coming from that's the country, the how did you find your way to North Sydney? Uh, finished playing on the Central Coast uh, under-16s and... Obviously, if I wanted to go and play in, in first grade in Sydney, which is what I wanted, uh, you know, you had to you had to make the move. as was no team back in them days. And uh, so I just come down and, and played uh, an open day trial with North Sydney SG Ball and played two games and they offered me a contract and started from there. We're watching some great vision in North Sydney. Does it disappoint you that uh, these great memories are gone now for North Sydney? Uh, we had a great club in the early 90s, you know. We had, a, we had a great time and a good team and... You know, the last couple of years, things just went down the tube, and that is disappointing to see how it all finished up, but that's in the past now, and I've moved on, and that's the way it goes. A lot of different coaches during the time there, were they? I think something like five different coaches in about 10 or 12 years. Quite a turnover. They did, but I mean, the time I was at North, we only had Steve Martin and Peter Louis, so, uh, you know, I've only, I've, and now Warren Ryan, so I've only had three coaches my whole career. I thought towards the end of the North Sydney thing, a lot of you fellas that have been there for a long time, you know, it started to get stale. Mm. And you're a perfect example. You've gone to a new club and found a new lease of life. We did, Gus, you know. You've been at a club for such a long time, you get stale. You know, I was pretty happy with my form there the last couple of years. And obviously, the side wasn't going that well. I mean, you obviously don't get any individual recognition. So, you know, as Mario said earlier, I just turned up and did my best every week. Well, I remember having, I was at a luncheon with you a couple of years ago at the, at the Taronga Zoo. You were there that day. And uh, I was talking to you about your footy. And, and even then... I knew that you sort of hit the brick wall and you were looking for something fresh. I did, you know. I had a lot of... Uh, the last season at North and the season before that, you know, I had a pro- lot of problems and my father got cancer and then, I, and then the following year died three days before the, uh, the start of the season. So mentally for that two-year period, you know, mm. I wasn't the same. You know, I played some really good games, played some ordinary games. I was a little bit inconsistent and it's something that I've always prided myself on was being consistent. So... Uh, it's the way it goes, you know, such is life. So these are the things that people never know or read about, and uh, these are why so football, so many footballers are so tough. Mate, I forgot what I was going to say. Fair enough. How am I going? That's, no, you're going good. Does does he, the rest of no, why uh, England? Why have you gone to England? <laughs> mate, I had to get some money, Gus. You know, obviously with the uh, situation with the Northern Eagles, uh, you know, I've, I've got to wait five years to get paid. We asked the NRL to uh, step in and say, look, you know, can you look after these blokes? And they basically said... Bad luck. So it was just a financial decision. I mean, I've got mortgages and bills to pay, so I had to get some money to cover the loans. What about rep football, mate? Rep football. Um, always, uh, always sort of felt a little bit disappointed with State of Origin. You know, I, I sort of could never, never crack it. You know, never, never make the scene, which was uh, for one reason or another was disappointing. Had a tremendous time on the Kangaroo Tour. Um, Enjoyed being in camp with the guys and all that sort of stuff, but uh, would have liked to have really uh, cemented a place in, in representing football. We just just couldn't quite establish it. Just got to show you what this bloke's like. You're very hard on, on, on yourself uh, as a player. Well, every, everyone, you know, you, you want to play... Uh, everyone wants to play 30 tests and 20 origins. I mean, you know, and I was uh, lucky to play what I did. You know, I was just come out of hard work. So, you know, I can always look back. And if I win a comp with Newcastle, you know, I've done everything there is to do. Are you playing any differently now to, to what you did, you know, I suppose when you were representing? Has your game changed in, in, in many ways? Uh, I think it has. Probably uh, the last three or four years are a lot, lot uh, physically a lot stronger than I used to be. And um, I think at Newcastle, having the, the calibre of player around me too, is obviously uh, my game's changed a little bit as well. What does Warren Ryan say to you before you go out each week? Um, he more or less, he, he puts the emphasis back on me. He says, you know, you've been around a long time. You know what you have to do to win the game. You know, you know, you know what's required and... I mean, if we can do that, we've got the players there that can capitalise on it. He has his critics, Warren Ryan, regarded as one of the great coaches. What do you, how do you feel about Warren? I think he's fantastic. I, I remember the first day uh, when I got cut from uh, the, the Northern Eagles, he rang me and I came to the office and he said, uh, you know, if I didn't think you could play, I wouldn't have rang you. He said, I'm, I'm, not here to, I'm not running a charity, I'm here to win the comp. 
And, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Warren. He's obviously uh, given me a great opportunity and um, I've really enjoyed it. Mate, you got the spare weekend this weekend. Now, in the old days at the Bulldogs, Warren used to like that fresh weekend where he could really freshen you up and, and have a good time. I, I suppose it's just been fun and giggles, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Now, we've had three, three hard sessions. The thing about Warren... It, you can really sense it. He's been there, done it. knows how to knows how to get us across the line. knows what to do, and uh, there's definitely no panic in there, Warren. Speaking of, of senses, like you've been in a situation where you've only been a game away from a grand final on a number of occasions. Mm. How does that compare that that feeling and atmosphere at North to what you're experiencing at Newcastle now? Pretty much in the same position. Uh, coming into the same position, as far as atmosphere goes, I mean North Sydney, Newcastle, chalk and cheese is just you, you can't even compare it. What about today's game? Who do you think? I really can't split them. I, I think the fact that uh, Canberra have got a few out probably takes a little bit of pressure off them because they say, well, you know, no one's really expecting us to win. Um, the new blokes coming into the team can actually probably grow on this. So I think it's going to be a lot tighter than people think. As you leave your Australian shores, um, just the three best forwards that you would have played with or against over the last 12 years? I think Bradley Clyde, uh, definitely a standout. Do um, you put me on the spot there? Uh, Bradley like Clyde, definitely a standout, but you look at blokes yeah. like Nathan Imarsh coming into the game yeah. and you see you see so many comparisons, he's going to be a great player Paul for Harrigan, many years. Paul Harrigan, Gary Larson. Paul Harrigan, they had a lot of respect for Chief and Gary uh, for his durability. Um, yeah, it's been, I've played with some good and against some good players. Mate, we've got to congratulate you too. Um, footy show awards on Monday night, you're yeah. our prop of the year. You, you play in a couple of different positions, but predominantly prop. And of course, yeah. you are a Rothmans medal winner as well. So 94? Been some the nice big rort. <laughs> the big, the big well, I didn't get any of it. I just knew he got it before they announced it. That's record winner. Too. But that's like... T- t- oh, record winner. Hello, a bit of a head wobble there. All right, Dave, thanks very much for your time this morning, mate. Uh, wish you all the best for the rest of the year. And, of course, over at the mighty St. Allen's, you'll kill them there at Norsley no, Road. No, big shoes to follow. Fatty, oh, mate, yours. of course. Mel Meninga did have a great year there. <laughs> back in 84. We'll take a break. David Fairley, one of the good guys of rugby league, come back with plenty more. After yesterday's demolition of Canberra, the Sydney Roosters have bounced back into serious contention for the NRL title, but overcoming Newcastle this weekend and the memories of a 46-12 thrashing when last they met will be a major challenge. This is the man who could make the difference in the Roosters' quest for their first title since 1975. There's a really good feeling amongst the team. If we can keep our consistency up and do the little things right over the next few weeks, we should go, go very well. Craig Wing answered his critics in the best way possible coming off the bench against Canberra. Wing scored the vital first try just before half time and set up another midway through the second half. It's been a little bit easier um, the last month because, because I've sort of known when I'm, when I'm going to go on the field and I know what position I'm going to going to play it. Losing Scott Logan with a fractured cheekbone won't help the Roosters who must overcome Newcastle. The same side that gave them a thrashing in round 22. But captain Brad Fittler wants to make one thing clear. How are we going to touch up on Newcastle? <laughs> Despite that prediction, Newcastle have had the week's rest and enjoyed the support of an entire city. It's, it's a grand final for us. Uh, if we don't win this one then that's the season, so uh, we need to put our best foot forward and uh, if we can get as many people as possible down there, that'd be great for us. You know, we've got an entire city behind us and, and uh, we go well and they feel great. Darren Albert was that city's hero in 1997, putting on a move with Andrew Johns to snatch the title in the dying seconds. So is he working on another special move for this year? Oh, we can't really work on that because that's pretty <laughs> spontaneous, so <laughs> I'd rather not. The Knights will be favourites, but the Roosters won't die wondering. Newcastle's popular, but retiring captain Tony Butterfield continues to collect memories. 2,000 fans and a horse attended his testimonial dinner last night, with all drinks on hold until after Saturday's final against the Roosters. Clinton Fletcher, National 9 News. Now, Tony, Newcastle versus the Roosters. The Knights have had a week off, of course. What effect will that have? Well, Matthew, it's worth noting since the NRL formed two years ago, the four teams who have all enjoyed the break have all been beaten the following weekend. Now, that's an interesting suggestion there, but the Knights nonetheless believe the break has been a big plus. To have the week off has been very refreshing. I think we're all a lot more uh, fresh this week, not only of body but also of mind. So I think for this team personally, it's been a big bonus having the week off. Saturday's final, all's well with both Newcastle and the Roosters. The only thing worrying the local side, that their supporters will be outnumbered by Knights fans.
Of the four clubs involved in this weekend's grand final race, the Roosters are seen as a trendy team without many fans, or at least those who are willing to turn up in numbers and watch them. We know that they're out there somewhere, mate. we just got to find them, so we might have to employ someone to go search for them. Against Newcastle, the Six Roosters face a club later. with a highly visible fan base who have been an integral part of the night's success. Well, I think they'd probably be the form side and we're, we're probably the underdog, which I, I, that suits me anyway. Six weeks ago, the Knights gave the Roosters a spanking. Andrew Johns was on fire in a team that smouldered. It's that challenge from the Johns brothers that particularly excites Brad Fittler. You know, I really enjoy playing them two fellas because they love their footy and they, they sort of bring it out in you, you know, you get a bit of that boyhood enthusiasm. The importance of the match for Andrew Johns is not just about the possibility of playing alongside his brother for the last time. It's the fear he may never pass this way again. You really don't know how many grand finals you're going to play, you know, this could be my last chance to play one, so you've got to make the most of it. The challenge has been laid down to Roosters captain Brad Fittler in this weekend's semi-final. Newcastle star halfback Andrew Johns is determined to be the match winner for the Knights against Freddie's men on Saturday night. He's rated the best player in the game, but for Andrew Johns, semi-final football is the true test of his talent. And I think the side of the Rugal players, if you can sort of play well in big games and you know, put two or three on end, that's what I have to do. Put two big games on end and I'll be happy. John's destroyed Brad Fittler's yeah, roosters the last time their paths crossed. Now Andrew hits them on the open side. He puts a hat-trick of tries helping the Knights to a 46-12 win. Beat the boys from Bondi this time and Newcastle can turn the clock back to 1997 and their first premiership. Just a week leading into the grand finals, great memories, and if you can win it, you know, it's doubly special again. And unlike 97 this year, it's a unified competition. There's going to be that sort of stigma of us saying, oh, yeah, you won it 97, but the Broncos weren't there, so it's time for us to put it to bed now. All right, one bloke who will be a combatant of yours, of course, on Saturday night, joins us now from Newcastle, one of Newcastle's best, Matty Johns. G'day, Matt. Hey, Matty, how you going, mate? Well, how's your week been? You, uh, did you appreciate, did you and your team appreciate the weekend off? Yeah, we did. Uh, I mean, it'd be easily, uh, uh, I mean, it's easy to get sort of carried away and lose your focus, but it's been a really good week. Warren's worked very hard with us. I mean, we could have played last week and had two blokes sent, you know, to the uh, judiciary and had a couple of injuries, so we're pretty happy. Which two would have been sent, Matt? Oh, me and Joey. Okay, <laughs> that would have been a problem. <laughs> Matty, with uh, Warren Ryan being the coach and he's been there quite a few times before, does he give you any one important thing to deal with over this next couple of weeks or this week, then hopefully the week after? Really, Warren's uh, just worked simply with us. You know, he said simplicity is going to be the answer. Uh, we're not sort of going crazy trying to cover too many options. Uh, we're probably just the effort we're looking for, Royce. That's the main thing. And, you know, as always, we're looking probably more for a good performance than a win. And, we think that if we perform to our optimum, most of the time we'll get away with the, uh, the points or a victory in this case. Royce and myself joined you and plenty of other guys up in Newcastle during the week for the Tony Butterfield farewell. Obviously you were farewelled also. 2,000 people at the Entertainment Centre. Very good feeling up there. I went away very confident about Newcastle's chances. The place is bubbling. Yeah, it is still. Uh, sort of get, starting to get a little bit of feel again, but uh, the team is, is very focused. And one of the great things we've got going up here at the moment is that yeah, myself, Butts, Peter Shields and David Fairley are leaving and of course we're desperate to go out in a high note but guys like Tamana Tahu and all the young guys, they're as desperate as we are so, you know, that's pretty rare. Matty, it's a, it's a strong side you've got there as we can see McDougall, Albert, Tahu, Gidley, Hughes, Johns and Johns, tremendous back line, that's where most of the points are scored but it's in the forwards where the battle is going to be won this week. No doubt it's Gus and, and I think that's uh, where we laid the platform uh, last week against Melbourne and we've laid it all year, really. Uh, you can't be working off the back foot. Matty, the last time you played the Roosters, 46-12 to 12 winners up there at Marathon Stadium in a pretty awesome performance. Do you see that as a bonus going into this game or could it lead to perhaps a little overconfidence or an expectation as to the way this game may run? Well, Gus, there's no way in the world that we're going to be overconfident. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you throw out the form guide to a certain extent when you get to semi-finals. Parramatta has showed that this year and the uh, and Canterbury Bulldogs have showed that in the past. So, mate, overconfidence is, is in no way a problem with us. Craig, you mentioned that you had a little, a couple of little things up your sleeve as to how you were going to take on Newcastle. Does that mean we'll see a, a different kind of performance from the Roosters this week? Like, do you, have you modified your game plan? 
to take on the different opposition? Uh, not necessarily. I think pretty much as um, as Johnsy said just then, it's it's about doing the little things right. <coughs> That that um, when you've got the little things going going well, the the team goes well around it. Just Craig, with um, like Newcastle going to turn up in big numbers this weekend, supporters. Uh, I suppose you'd have a word for for your supporters to get out there and get behind you on the weekend. They're going to bring they'll bring a heap down. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much our own our home ground, so we expect them to turn out in droves. Um, Gus, the the Roosters forward pack, no Scott Logan. I mean, pressure really on Peter Cusack, Ian Rubin. Dallas Hood to perform against the might of this uh, Newcastle forward pack? Yeah, what they lack from Scotty Logan, they can make up in other areas with Dallas Hood. I mean, I find mm. Dallas a tremendous player good coming play. off the bench. He's got, he's got good foot speed. He can, he can get to the breakdown of play. He can be very advantageous in defence around the rucks because he's a little bit more mobile than Scotty Logan. Scotty Logan does bust them up for you, so Peter Cusack and Ian Rubin have just got to get their head down and do the job. Matty, on, on forwards, Ben Kennedy's uh, come back from an injury and he seems to be getting better each week. Uh, how is his injury and, uh, you know, and his form to go with it? His form's great, Royce. As best it's been all year, actually. It's been a bit of a surprise to see him bounce back so quickly after that bad ankle injury. But uh, I think the origin done his confidence miles are good. And uh, this week's the first time that he's really ran freely without painkillers. So, you know, it can only probably get better. Matty, we've had a look through the Newcastle side. Shock horror down here. No Reg Reagan again involved in this match. That's disappointing. So disappointing for him, actually. So disappointing. He'll be off next year. He'll be, he'll be back to the Cessnock Goannas, won't he? Yeah, well, I'd try to get him a start at Wigan, but uh, they wouldn't let him through customs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matty, uh, we'll see you on Saturday night. And, Craig, thanks very much for your time. Please, Satan, Craig, William, Matthew, Johns. <laughs> and you'll see that on Saturday night. It's live on your televisions. Newcastle Knights taking on the Sydney Roosters. And uh, there are our picks. All You're kidding, us, you three, aren't you? Three of us going for the Knights and Gus, a Roosters man through and through. <laughs> and tonight, we really do thank Craig and Matty for coming yep. in. It's a big week for them and to put themselves out, we certainly appreciate it. So thanks for coming in, guys, and good luck. <laughs> well, I mean... I don't think there'll be much in it. I, I think there'll be four, three or four points in it, that's all. I think it'll be a pretty tight match. All the games have been tied up to a point and then there's been a bit of a yeah. blowout at the end. I think these two games, even the Parramatta Broncos yeah. game, will be extremely tight. This will be real finals football on the weekend. Get out and watch it, particularly you Roosters fans. Get there to the stadium on yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> all right. OK, look, there's a new, new movie about to hit the, uh, the cinemas. It's called The Boot Men and it's, uh, it's a movie about... Uh, it's centred around Newcastle and the Marathon Stadium gets a start. And uh, it's about <laughs> Newcastle. What's, what's it about, and mate? I'm not sure, actually, but it's from 20th century, as you can see. And uh, Tony Butterfield gets a run in it. He has a cameo role as one of the hard men. He's come as a bouncer and, and, and uh, he's getting out of the car there. And it's raining and stuff. And uh, it's a pretty good movie, apparently. It's there. called The Bootman. There he is. That's great acting. Fantastic acting. Oh, there, look at that. Reminds me of me in my heydays. Backhand is... <laughs> Anyway, it's a pretty good movie. Who's your favourite Bronco? I can't think of his name. Um... Joe Kilroy. Joe, yeah, yeah. Oh. You guys all right, Joe Kilroy? Yeah. You be at the game? No, I won't be. Oh, I'm, not... I'm not too sure yet, I'm not too sure yet. But, but uh, I'm a mad Newcastle Knights supporter. I was born in Newcastle. I was born in Newcastle. And I do follow the Broncos. Got you, mate. So have a nice weekend. And I've, and I've been a footy winning chick all my life. Uh, <laughs> the kangaroo night, the, kang the kangaroos who, who will beat Hawthorne. Hey, ask Go kangaroos. You want to ask me a question? Yeah. What are you going to ask me? What can I ask you? <laughs> why do you wear the white suit? Why do you wear the white suit? Why do you wear the white, <laughs> do you wear the white suit for? Because I'm yesterday's hero. Uh, who, who used to sing that song? John Paul Young. When yeah, I walk down the yeah, street, that's can you right. You're can you right. See it? No, I can't. No, I got the. I got a bit of a flu. Oh, okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> right, go, 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 North Melbourne. Go Kangaroos. Thanks, go man. Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> Enough's enough. Enough. You've heard from the people. The hero has spoken. Back to you, Fatso. Who we run into? Oh, I even know that face. I can see that's Ronnie Gibbs, Ronnie. former manly. Hello, player. Rambo.
One of the all-time tough blokes on the field. I know Ronnie pretty well. He's a real good bloke. Ronnie, who's the question for? Well, I, haven't, I didn't really have a question, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> but, mate, I'd like to congratulate on you on your baby last night and Michelle. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Ron. Very good, sir. Before, what do you got, Rob? You got a print. Everyone's got a print. Everyone's come up with a print. The bloke's honoured me with one. It's uh, for breaking the Australian record and doing the premiership again next year. It's got Australian champion jockey Larry uh, Alan Robinson. Mate, there's an 1800 number that should be on the screen. Yeah, 1 800 676 338 if you'd like that uh, couple of Kodaks there, Robbo. Hey, Robbo, can you, can you get one with a shot down at Kembla where the horse is about 20 feet from where you are? You're going over yeah, the fence. Yeah, good, Pete. And it's yeah, going good, straight. Pete. If you frame that up for me, I'll buy yeah, one. Yeah, you're on fire, Stella. <laughs> talking, about, talking, about blokes, talking about blokes who have bought one, the first bloke to, that did buy one was uh, Chief Harrigan. It's not only for your bar. Lovely Pam's put it on the bed, Ed, and he said it's done wonderful things for his relationship. <laughs> so there's only, there's only a thousand of them left because Chiefs take the first one. So on that, we'll cut back to Fatso, won't we, Ron? Yeah, I think so, Alan. I think so. I think he'll come to the party. Good on you, buddy. What a bloke. I love him. Thanks, mate. <laughs> hey, good to see Ronnie. One of the, uh, one of the tough men of rugby league and uh, helped us win that premiership back in 87. One of the great men of rugby league, Ronnie Gibbs. Well, there's only four teams left in the NRL. This weekend's winners to meet in the grand final. Tony Peters looks at the sudden death games. This is the heartbreaking weekend of the season when two sides are left one game short of that grand final appearance that so few players get to experience. On Saturday night, Newcastle and its vast army will converge on the football stadium to meet the Sydney Roosters in what could prove the most entertaining clash in the final series. More than 60 buses will make the trek down the Pacific Highway to Moore Park. The break has been good for the Knights. They're fresh, well balanced and in a tight situation have the genius of the Johns brothers, Andrew and Matthew, to call on. They go into the match very confident. I mean, there's a lot of self-confidence in the team and a lot of, you know, desperation and urgency and, uh, you know, just, just the, the, the mood around the place is really upbeat and positive. Head to head, the Knights are slightly in front with two games drawn. In 2000, honours are even. The Roosters scored twice late in the match to win 20 to 18 in round nine, but in round 22, Andrew Johns turned in the near perfect game as Newcastle thumped Sydney 46 to 12. The Roosters showed admirable courage in beating Canberra last week. They were under siege until they took control in the second half. To beat Newcastle, they will have to scramble well, and it will be physical. The forwards are, are pretty physical, but you know I think our forward pack is going to be um, have to be on their game, and it, I reckon we, we're up to it. Rugby League's grand finalists will be decided at the weekend, with the winners of two tough preliminary finals going through to the big one. Tomorrow night it's Newcastle against the Sydney Roosters, and on Sunday afternoon those youngsters from Parramatta against the might of the Broncos. Hordes of Knights fans turned out to send their team off to Sydney. Even players carrying precious baggage answered the many requests for autographs. Both John's brothers given virtual rock star status. It's miles away from game time, there's people here supporting us already, so you know, we get tremendous support and we really appreciate it. Already there's talk of repeating the 1997 grand final success, but unless they win tomorrow night, Newcastle's cool captain won't hear a word of it. Nah, not a lot to be said. Up to 40 busloads of fans will follow the Knights down the freeway tomorrow. Meantime, Newcastle has arrived in Sydney ahead of its clash with the Roosters. The usual legion of fans saw the players off this morning, an indication the Knights will have plenty of support at the football stadium tomorrow night. Well, the up game this weekend is a test of character as much as survival. Newcastle take on the Roosters at the Sydney football stadium, and in this one, reputations could mean everything. Newcastle has arrived in Sydney with an unchanged side fresh from a week's break, ready for tomorrow night's joust with the Roosters. They're a team that possesses a lot of speed out wide and, um, and skill uh, up the middle. Uh, they are a little bit unpredictable and I'd say they would admit themselves that they haven't been altogether consistent this year, but um, you know, it means nothing in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation as we will be tomorrow night. Last time the two met, the Roosters were reduced to chickens, left with egg on their face after a humiliating 46-12 drubbing. But both sides are expecting a closer result this time. 
they'll keep shooting at you, Newcastle, and we know that. And uh, you know, so so be it if it's 10-8 with 10 to go. I and mean, it's not a coach's dream, but I think that's why it could end up this game because both sides, I think, have got fairly good defence on their days, but uh, very good attacking sides. The bookies are backing the Knights to ride into a grand final spot, but first they'll need to overcome their SFS slump, having lost five of their last six games at the football stadium.